Armando has doing biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan. In this video, we're going to talk about major histocompatibility complex class one processing, MHC1 processing. So what we're going to talk about is how a cell basically processes MHC class one together with an antigen and how the cell will express this MHC class one uh, with an antigen on it and it will express it to a CD8 T cell because MHC1 is only expressed when a cell is um, infected you can say. So we begin here by drawing the cell. It can be any nucleated cell. Here we have the extracellular fluid and here we have the intracellular fluid. Some important components within the cell that we have to do know is that we have an endoplasmic reticulum, specifically the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And of course, the in rough endoplasmic reticulum is close to the nucleus, which I have not drawn. But just know that we have an endoplasmic reticulum. Further, we also have the Golgi apparatus, which is important in the MHC1 processing. And lastly, we have an important complex known as the proteasome. Now, the proteasome is within the cytoplasm and has important functions, which we'll talk about soon. So let's begin with the MHC class 1 processing. So what happens is, for an, an example, is that a pathogen on the outside, it can be a bacteria in this case, will invade the cell, will infiltrate the cell. The, path the pathogen, in this case the bacteria, can for example, take over the cell. It can multiply within the cell. It can take over the cell machinery if it was a virus. It will essentially infect the cell. And through this process, the pathogen will make its own uh, proteins in the cell. So here I'm drawing um, endogenous proteins of the bacteria, for example. So these are the protein products of the bacteria. Now these protein products, they luckily can be uh, can enter the proteasome. Now the proteasome is a complex that essentially will degrade these cytosolic proteins into small fragments. So it will, these uh, bacterial endogenous proteins will enter the proteasome and they will come out in small fragments about 15 amino acids in length. And so we have many of these. And then these uh, small fragments, bacterial fragments, can then enter the endoplasmic reticulum through what's called the TAP transporter. The TAP transporter is composed of TAP1 and TAP2. And when these 15 amino acid fragments, these antigens, these peptides, will enter the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they can get further broken down to about 8 to 10 amino acids by specific enzymes within the endoplasmic reticulum. So let's stop there and look at the ribosome. Now ribosomes are, as we know, uh, machines that essentially make proteins. And so this ribosome is making proteins, an MHC class 1 protein, which is about 43 kilodaltons in mass. So here it will make the MHC class 1 protein. However, it is incomplete because it, it is only composed of alpha 1, 2, and 3 domains, as you can see. This incomplete MHC one is bound to a protein called calnexin. Now calnexin's function is as a chaperone, bringing the MHC1 through the endoplasmic reticul reticulum to prepare it, you can say. Following this, the, uh, another protein, uh, what, which is a microglobulin, beta-2M, about 12 kilodaltons in mass, will actually attach to this incomplete MHC class 1, which will essentially complete it. So now we have a complete MHC class 1 made up of alpha 1, 2, 3, and beta 2 domains. Now, at the same time, there will be other proteins attaching on, on this MHC class 1, specifically calreticulin and ERP57. So what do these proteins do? Well, calreticulin and ERP57 will essentially cover the binding groove, the binding site of the MHC class 1, which will prevent peptides, antigens to interact with the binding site of MHC class 1. Further, 
the Cal Articulate and ERP57 will act as a chaperone and it will bring the MHC class 1 molecule towards the TAP transporter, while the MHC class 1 will interact with another protein called tapacin. When it interacts with tapacin, ERP57 and Cal Articulate will essentially disassociate, which will allow these small peptide fragments that are in the in, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, the small bacterial peptide fragments, to bind onto the binding groove of the MHC class 1. However, the MHC class 1 binding site, the cleft, the groove, is very unique and only spits, uh, fits sorry, to a specific antigen. And this is because uh, it contains a variable region. The alpha 1 and 2 is unique because it's a variable region and binds to specific antigens. But, for example, if an antigen fits nicely into the binding groove, the MHC class 1, together with the peptide, the antigen, can then leave the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it will leave the endoplasmic reticulum within an endosome, and it will go through the Golgi apparatus in the normal endoexocytosis process. And it will then, from the Golgi apparatus in the endosome, the MHC class 1, together with the peptide, will be presented on the cell surface. So this cell, which is infected by the bacteria, will express MHC class 1 with a small fragment of the bacteria on its cell surface. This is what is happening. And now the MHC class 1 being expressed on the cell surface with this small peptide will then wait for interaction with a CD8 T cell, a cytotoxic T cell. The MHC class 1 will only interact with this cell and so we can say that it is, uh, it is CD8 T cell restricted. So again, this is our infected cell, and here is a cytotoxic T cell, a CD8 T cell. So the cytotoxic T cell, the CD8 T cell, contains few types of receptors, one of which is this receptor. This is a CD8 receptor, by the way. And it will interact with the MHC class 1 molecule. So what happens? is the infected cell will present the antigen, the peptide, to a CD8 T cell. Then the CD8 receptor will check if it's an MHC class 1 being expressed because the CD8 only interacts with MHC class 1, uh, usually, often. And then the CD8 T cell has another receptor, the T cell receptor. The T cell receptor's role is to check the antigen, because the, C, the T cell receptor only fits to a specific antigen, the peptide, just like the MHC molecule. So if both are okay, if the CD8 recognizes the MHC, it, it's an MHC class 1, and if the TCR fits to the specific antigen being presented, the cytotoxic T cell can then release chemicals, cytokines that will essentially kill this infected cell. Before I conclude, I should say that the T cell receptor, the CD8 T cell receptor, contains many CD8 T cells and many T cell receptors, and that this uh, all this cell presenting the MHC class one actually will present many types of MHC MHC class one on the cell surface, and that each MHC class one is unique in that it binds to a specific antigen due to the variable region in the alpha 1 and alpha 2 and that the T cell receptor, each T cell contains a unique T cell receptor. Next we're going to look at MHC class 2 processing. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.